Fair play. Fair play. Fair play. I can't even be mad anymore. I... It's expected. It's... It's expected. Fair play. I... I can't... There's no words. There's no words. I... I can't even be mad anymore. Vinicius Jr. Fair freaking play. The Ballon d'Or debate is over. Vinicius Jr. Today. Proved that there is no competition for this award this year. The people that were hitting on him, saying that he's going to be the worst Ballon d'Or winner in the past 10, 15 years. Fair play. Once again, proving the doubters wrong, man. Hat trick in the repeat of the UCL final of the previous season. At the Bernabeu, after being 2-0 down, you go out in the second half and do that. Man, fair freaking play Vinny Jr. Because that was a masterclass. That was a Cristiano Ronaldo-esque UCL vintage performance. And to top it off, he held the shirt up and everything, bro. Fair play Vinny Jr., bro. And fair play Real Madrid, honestly. Um, because Borussia Dortmund, they started off very freaking well. 2-0 up at the Bernabeu in the first half. A little bit of luck and fortune in especially their first goal. The ball was kind of ricocheting all over the place. Julian Brandt got a little poke to it. And then um, Girasi, great awareness, little back heel flick uh, behind Edward Mendy. And Daniel Malin gives them the 1-0 lead. Then in the second half, uh, Daniel Malin takes the ball down the, down the right-hand side, faces it into the box. Lucas Vasquez falls asleep at the back post. And within a matter of, what, 35 minutes, Borussia Dortmund are 2-0 up at the Bernabeu. Everyone's thinking this is their revenge for last season's final. Borussia Dortmund finally have something to go with here and are they gonna stick it out for the rest of the game is Real Madrid mudded is this the end of the dream for the Galacticos are they overhyped with Mbappe did he ruin the team well I think the stat sheet proved us wrong everyone who was thinking that way because in the second half Real Madrid heritage bro I mean every single time I literally count them out this guy right here Vinny Jr. Federico Valverde, Luka Modric, they all play their part and end up doing the inevitable. I'm dressed in purple like Thanos because inevitable world. Real Madrid once again spark their comeback in the UCL. First off, it started with, um, I believe, who scored the first goal? Antonio Rudiger, how could I forget? I don't know why the hell he was up there when being 2-0 down early on in the second half, but he got a thundering header off of an Mbappe cross and fair play to Killian. Listen, his shooting boots weren't on it today, but he did get two lovely assists today, so I'm not really going to criticize him too harshly. Obviously, huge expectation on his shoulders and on his head, and if he manages to win the UCL this season, it's just meeting expectations for him, so you could just see the amount of pressure this guy's going to be under the whole season. Uh, he's expected to bring that big trophy home, and so far, Real Madrid have proven and shown that based off what they showed today, they're the favorites for this competition, without a freaking doubt. The fact that they can go 2-0 down and not lose their sense of hope and just maintain faith that they're Real Madrid at the end of the day. Why would you lose faith when you have Mbappe, Rodrigo, and Vinicius Jr. available to you with Jude Bellingham right behind him? One of them isn't performing. You best believe at least one of those four is going to show out. And if one of those four isn't going to show out, then you have Endrik and Arda Guler and Brahim Diaz, all these guys off the bench that could pull the rabbit out of the hat and save the freaking day. I mean, this is literally... Remember Classic XI on FIFA? This is Classic XI in real life, bro. They have Rudiger Modric. Oh my god, bro. Tons of walkouts, 86 plus rateds in the team. And I'm I'm so impressed. This was, this was better than the UCL final of last season. It was an insane game and by far and away the best UCL game of the campaign so far. My goodness. They were absolutely unbelievable. Um, just touching on... Borussia Dortmund's performance for the day it was brave especially in the first half they were very brave on the front foot they weren't scared to go on the attack and that's something I like with teams usually at the Bernabeu they seem to hide they seem to drop back a little bit and not really go on the front foot try to take it all I mean at the end of the day Real Madrid have only been beaten by one team in like the past 50 UCL games and that has been Chelsea in in the 2022 season and they still eliminated Chelsea over in uh and on the aggregate score of both games home and away 
And listen, man, um, Rodri, there was shouts of him for the Ballon d'Or, Lautaro Martinez, all these guys. Listen, no one is on the level of Vinicius Jr. in terms of clutchness in the UCL. This guy has scored or assisted in every one of Real Madrid's UCL knockout ties in his entire tenure at Real Madrid since 2018, I believe, 2018-19. He's only failed to score or assist in one UCL knockout game, and that was against Chelsea, I believe, in the 2021 season when Chelsea won the UCL. So those people that are saying this guy doesn't deserve the Ballon d'Or, because he's a one season wonder are absolutely delusional. They're stupid. Don't don't believe anything they say because Vinicius Jr. has proven to be consistent ever since his third season at Real Madrid. He's been absolutely incredible and I'm glad he's getting the praise he deserves. I mean the second goal today, taking on literally the entire Borussia Dortmund team from his own third of the pitch, Bellingham, the easiest assist he'll ever get in his life. That was like when Busquets just laid it off to Leo Messi and then he dribbled past the whole Real Madrid team. It was kind of similar. Not as much players he dribbled past, but the amount of distance he covered in one goal was absolutely unreal. And then after that, um, the third goal, Magic. Magic by Vini, 95th minute, still having the legs to cut back and forth and destroy Anton and Sule, all these guys, and bang it into the top corner of the near post on a massive goalkeeper like Gregor Kobel. Ballon d'Or, bro. Ballon d'Or and fair play to Vinny. Because he he is unreal, bro. Unreal. And yeah, that's that's the recap of the Real Madrid game. Um, next game we're going to quickly touch upon is the Aston Villa game. So Aston Villa currently in first place of the Champions League over everybody. Unai Emery is doing a fantastic job in the UCL. And it's not going unnoticed. At least on this channel. You guys best believe it's not going unnoticed. Because... The level of performances this guy has put in in the UCL. The clean sheets they have kept. I believe two clean sheets in three games, if I'm not mistaken. I always forget who they played in their first game. Let's actually check that out real quick. Because I'm kind of forgetting who Aston Villa played. Let's see. Okay. Um... Damn. Let's see who they've been playing. All right, let's see, let's see, let's see. Because I, I kind of forgot, I'm not going to lie. I did kind of forget, I'm not going to lie. So they beat Bologna today, obviously, 2-0. John McGinn, beautiful free kick goal. John Duran, very attentive in the box. Gets yet another goal for Aston Villa. This guy's on fire, bro. Um, So they played Young Boys. So three clean sheets in three UCL matches, bro. One away game, the two most recent ones were at Villa Park against Bayern Munich and Bologna, respectively. Aston Villa has to be taken seriously. Are they a title contender for the UCL this year? I wouldn't say so quite yet. Maybe they'll make a dark horse type of run like Ajax, um, like Borussia Dortmund last season. I see them doing something similar to that. But to go ahead and win the whole thing, I don't think so. But they're definitely heading in the right direction. Bologna, not the strongest of teams anymore. Obviously, they lost basically their whole entire freaking team, uh, which which was sold to the rest of Europe. Calafiori to Arsenal, Thiago Mota to... Um, to, to Juventus, Zergzi over to Manchester United. Listen, the core of that team got absolutely ripped to shreds um, and and they couldn't do anything about it, but they're still in the UCL. They're still doing decently in terms of being competitive, but by no means are they, are they going to qualify for the next round, in my opinion. Um, but Aston Villa game plan was absolutely spot on once more. The chances they created were unbelievable. Jacob Ramsey almost secured the third goal for, for Villa in that second half. And they were all over Bologna the entire game. There was a couple opportunities which Emi Martinez saved. Nothing too crazy that he had to deal with. And they, for the most part, had the control of the game. So another emphatic win by Villa. Another win that their supporters are going to be so proud of. And it's crazy to see a team that won the Champions League in 1982 is back up and running after experiencing years in the second division of English football, experiencing various different styles of managers and players from the era of Jack Grealish during COVID absolutely balling out and barely escaping relegation over to now Unai Emery revitalizing this team after Steven Gerrard had done such a terrible job despite being backed by the board. He was sacked and my God, was that one of the best decisions ever in Aston Villa history. Now they seem like they're going to establish themselves as at least a team that competes for top four year in and year out. And as long as they keep comp they keep backing Unai Emery, I mean, the sky's the limit for this team. Absolutely. Their fan base is massive. They're a team that's 
part of English football history 100%. And the fact that they've already won the UCL one time previously goes to show that this team has some football heritage, like Jose Mourinho likes to say. But, man, Morgan Rogers, very good player. Ross Barkley even is still balling out. Ollie Watkins off the bench in the second half. Looks like John Duran's getting a little bit more faith and confidence by Unai Emery to, to start games off, and fair play to him, man. They they kept hold of their of their striker, who they had faith in. A lot of teams were in it to buy this guy, especially Chelsea. They didn't want to offer the big $50 million, uh, price tag that they were asking for, but Aston Villa were within their rights to to ask for that big price tag. I mean, this guy's worth near $100 million based on today's market. The goals he's been scoring in the competitions, in the big games that he's been scoring in, my God, this guy literally looks like the Colombian R9. So fair play to Villa. Hope they keep it up and continue this outstanding form. Um, and lastly, we're just going to touch upon Arsenal. Arsenal did get the 1-0 win against Shakhtar Donetsk. Uh, it seemed by the highlights because I didn't watch the game. I was fully invested into the Real Madrid and a little bit of, of the other game as well, of the Aston Villa game. The Arsenal game... 1-0 win to Arsenal, like I said. They came out with a pretty solid lineup, probably their strongest lineup possible, um, except they didn't have Bukayo Saka in there. He was given a little bit of a rest. They came out with Kai Havertz and Gabriel Jesus in the attack with Trossard and Martinelli on the wings. And then in the middle, their double pivot of Declan Rice and Thomas Partey and the similar back line that they've been using for a minute now, Ben White, Saliba, uh, Gabriel Magalais and Ricardo Calafiori who did seem to get a pretty bad injury hopefully it's not too bad but seems like he does sustain an injury issue along with him it's already the second time this season he's going to be injured so something to look out for for Arsenal hopefully it's not too bad because he's a very talented player and obviously David Raya in goal uh, the goal was marked as an own goal against Shakhtar Donetsk but it's one of those chances in which your player shoots the ball it comes off the post and then it hits the back of the goalkeeper and comes back in in my books, it's Martinelli's goal. In everyone's eyes, it was Martinelli's goal. He was fantastic today by the looks of the highlights. Created a lot of chances for Arsenal. Um, but it, it seemed like the Shakhtar team isn't too bad, actually. They were very close to equalizing near the end of the game. But once again, David Raya proving that Mikel Arteta made the right decision to let go of Ramsdale and have full faith in his Spanish goalkeeper. Because, my God. I feel like every time I watch a UCL Arsenal game, David Raya pulls off a worldie. And he did the same today. A long-range effort shot into the bottom left corner, saves it with a strong freaking hand. And and besides that, guys, Mikel Marino did come on, make a little bit of an impact, got a few crosses into the box. Um, but I think it's a very positive result for, for Arsenal to build upon going into their massive game against Liverpool this weekend. Listen, tomorrow is, is going to be an insane game for everyone to watch. I'm very excited to see Barcelona versus Bayern Munich, Hansi Flick versus his old club, Barca versus their daddies. Honestly, they've scored like 50,000 goals against them in the past five years. So it's going to be interesting to see how these teams line up against each other. Lewandowski against his old club as well. It's going to be crazy, guys. Um, Vincent Company, Hansi Flick, we'll see what they cook up for tomorrow. But let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments. I'm very interested in what you thought of today's match day. Did you expect such a thriller in this Real Madrid Borussia Dortmund game? Because best game of the UCL season so far. UCL is back, baby. I'm so excited. And tomorrow we have a bunch of other insane matches, including Barca versus Bayern Munich. So, yeah, stay tuned to the channel. Hope you guys have a good day and peace.